In the next few slides, we are going to look at a few well-known distributions for the time to failure and investigate uh, what sort of hazard function uh, they give rise to. Uh, we are going to pay some attention to the shape of the hazard function as well. So let's start with the uniform distributed time to failure. And as we remember, the uniform random variable is defined between two constants, A and B. So what you see on the screen are the uniform CDF and the uniform PDF. The PDF is a rectangle between the limits A and B. So the hazard function, let's start from basic definitions. It is the ratio of the uh, PDF to the reliability function, which is 1 minus CDF. And that's what you see on the screen. And if we uh, simplify it, we uh, end up at a hazard function, which is equal to 1 over b minus t, t being the realization of the random variable, uh, between a and b only. Uh, it's 0 elsewhere. So now we can ask an interesting question is that you know we have looked at certain properties of the hazard function that uh, its integral between 0 and infinity uh, has to blow up. Uh, it's, uh, it should be, it should tend to in infinity. So uh, can we have that property when uh, the hazard function uh, is defined only in a very finite range and zero outside of that range? It turns out that yes, uh, it, it, the, the random variable does not have to go all the way up to infinity, have a density function defined uh, for very, very large values in order for the hazard function to exist and for a legitimate reliability function to be defined based on that random time to failure. So here we have a very good example of a random variable that's defined on a finite range only, both on the left and the right. Uh, but still we have a reliability function which starts from zero, ends at, which starts from one, ends at zero, and um, the hazard function is non-zero only within that finite range. So uh, let's see what it looks like. And obviously, one minus one over b minus t is an increasing function. So the uniform TTF leads to an increasing failure rate, an increasing hazard function. Uh, so that actually has a significance. We are going to discuss in detail uh, what an increasing failure rate means and what a decreasing failure rate means uh, when we discuss the bathtub curve. Uh, we have already discussed the constant failure rate, uh, which comes from the exponential random variable. Uh, so, and the, the constant failure rate basically says whatever time you are at, uh, the likelihood of failure at the next instant doesn't change. So there is no aging effect going on. Things don't become more likely to fail as time goes for an exponential TTF. So the constant failure rate uh, is a very special uh, type of hazard function. Uh, but here, the uniform TTF leads to an increasing failure rate. Uh, and uh, this is what the PDF looks like. As I said, it's, it's a rectangle. Uh, and the CDF is a linear function between uh, A and B, rises from 0 to 1. And the hazard function now uh, goes up asymptotically to infinity at B, uh, but the area under this obviously is infinite, so that the reliability function uh, at B comes down to 0. Next, uh, we look at the normally distributed time to failure. Uh, obviously, we have to be careful. Normal distribution is defined between minus and plus infinity. Uh, but we are talking about the time to failure only taking non-negative values. So uh, let's make sure that we understand this, that even though we have a normally distributed TTF, we 
are defining it for only positive values of t, which means that we have truncated a distribution at t equals 0, left truncated, and we have normalized the density function so that uh, it still it checks all the boxes. So if that is so, then uh, the hazard function is uh, the ratio of the PDF and 1 minus the CDF, and that's what you see on the screen. Uh, and how does the shape of this hazard function look like? And we are going to reveal that in a second. So this is the density function centered on mu. Uh, and I've, if mu is large enough, you can see that uh, in, in relationship to sigma. So uh, possibility of negative values is small, but we can still left truncate it. Uh, now, this is the reliability function falling from uh, 1 to 0. Uh, and then the hazard function is actually increasing in nature. So uh, for a normally distributed time to failure, uh, we have an increasing failure rate and increasing hazard function. And basically, we are looking at uh, items that become more likely to failure as time goes on. So uh, they are looking at uh, aging type behavior. And we are going to look at this in detail, as I said later. Um, so the normal distribution gives rise to a, an increasing uh, failure rate. Now, uh, all the objections related to possible negative values of normal, uh, they are eliminated when we have a log normal time to failure. So the log normal distribution is defined only for uh, non-negative values. So here uh, we have the hazard function defined as a PDF over 1 minus CDF as before. And this particular function uh, has some interesting shapes. So let's, let's review that. Uh, so here, uh, first, what you see uh, is uh, a log normal random variable whose mean is uh, 1 uh, and whose COV coefficient of variation is 10%. It's rather small, so the distribution is not very spread out. Uh, and there we see the blue line is the PDF and the orange line is the hazard function. So clearly, uh, the hazard function is an increasing type and so uh, it behaves similar to that of the normal TTF. Um, so aging phenomena would be a good sort of uh, uh, basis for t taking up uh, the log normal TTF. But we have to be careful. Uh, if the coefficient variation increases, so we have more scatter uh, in the time to failure, then an interesting thing starts happening. Uh, here you see that uh, the coefficient variation is 30%, and uh, the orange line, the uh, the hazard function, uh, it increases quite sharply in the beginning, but then it plateaus out and then it starts to fall. Uh, so uh, you have to be careful uh, before selecting a log normal TTF uh, unless you know for a fact uh, that uh, the item in question uh, in the beginning or for a large part of its life um, exhibits an increasing failure rate type behavior and then suddenly it starts to have a decreasing failure rate. Uh, so as long as uh, that uh, property is satisfied by the item is in question, uh, you can adopt a log normal TTF uh, with a large 30% COV. Otherwise, uh, some other uh, time to failure distribution uh, should be preferred. And this behavior is even more pronounced when we have an even larger uh, COV, here you see 50% COV, and you see the more pronounced behavior of first increasing and then decreasing failure rate. Uh, 